to another edition of the Everlast Power Video Series. In today's edition, we're going to take a look at how to grind and properly resharpen tungsten. It's important to properly sharpen tungsten because that's where the arc stability comes from. If you have an improperly or poorly sharpened tungsten, you're going to have a hard time TIG welding because the arc is not going to be very stable. In the first step, you actually take the tungsten and break the old contaminated part of the tungsten off. And we're going to show you how to do that with a couple of pair of pliers next. To demonstrate the process we just discussed, um, let's for argument's sake say this end here is contaminated. Now you're going to grab it with one pair of pliers here. I've got another old piece of plier here. That's fine. It doesn't matter what kind of pliers you use as long as you can grab it securely. Now you want to grab it way back here to try to break it. Um, you need to grab it up fairly close to where you want to break it at. You don't need to uh, hold too much or you're going to end up bending this tungsten instead of snapping it cleanly. So you may want to actually choke up on it just a little bit like that. And of course the best idea is to snap off the, the affected part, the part that's contaminated. So take another pair of pliers and simply just run it up pretty close to the other pair and just twist with a little snapping motion like that and we've broken off the piece of contamination. And then you can take this piece and go and sharpen it. You may be asking why not just grind the contaminated tip? Well that's a good question. Uh, you're supposed to be using a dedicated grinding stone whenever you're grinding. So one of the things that you're going to do is actually put the contamination into the grinding stone and all you end up is uh, reloading the tungsten with that contamination over time. Now our main concern today is actually showing you how to grind a point properly on a piece of tungsten that you're going to use in an inverter welder, something like a 2% thoriated, and you'll use that for AC or DC. Now for an inverter welder, whether you're welding AC or DC, you want somewhat of a point on the tungsten. Keep in mind that grinding a tungsten, you're going to always grind the tungsten two and a half to three times uh, the length of the tungsten as it is wide in diameter. In other words, if you've got a 1 8 tungsten, you're going to grind it about uh, quarter inch up the shaft at the minimum up to 3 eighths of an inch. Now this is important to understand because this ratio here gives you the best arc and the arc is going to come off the point here so if you don't have a very good point that arc is going to dance around on you. Now there are times you may want to truncate this point just a little bit by taking off just a, a very little bit of material off the end of the tungsten particularly when you're welding at high amperages. That prevents a piece of the tungsten from flying off down into the weld. You know, with lower amperages and the proper size tungsten, you really don't need to do a lot of truncation. Now, depending upon your cleaning setting that you've got while welding AC, if you're welding aluminum, uh, this point is going to naturally dome a little bit. And that's fine. You just don't want to see a big round ball on the end. If you've got a big round ball on the end, you've got too much cleaning action. Now, this is one of the most common ways to grind tungsten on a standard bench grinder. You don't need a very big one. This is only a six inch. Um, just, you know, ordinary duty one will work. You don't have to have a heavy duty one, but one that is actually got a fine stone dedicated just to grinding tungsten. Now, if you've got one that you've been grinding everything in the world with, uh, you're going to need to change out the stone so that your stone is just purely dedicated to grinding tungsten. That's because you don't want to take the leftover contaminants uh, from some other kind of metal and introduce them into this stone and transfer them back into the tungsten itself. Now, as you can see here, there's a groove on this rock. Now this stone is actually being used for grinding tungsten exclusively and tungsten is very hard so you're going to end up, if you're grinding very much at all, you're going to end up with a groove in your stone. And the one thing that you need to be careful about is that you don't get too deep of a groove while you're grinding or you're going to end up with a damaged stone that could fly apart on you. So be sure if you're going to use a setup like this that you use a stone dresser which is designed for dressing up a stone and you need to actually use it to dress the face of the rock and make sure it's square. And we're going to do that now just to uh, get us started on a fresh face. Now you can spend a lot of money on a diamond grinder 
uh, to grind a piece of tungsten, but it's not really necessary. All you need is something, like I said, just a nice bench grinder like this. Now you see we've removed most of the uh, groove here. I left just a little bit to help center the tungsten when I'm grinding it. Now a couple things about grinding tungsten. Never grind tungsten in this direction. Why? Because when you're grinding the tungsten, you're going to make radial marks on the piece of tungsten on the tip. Even though it's pointed, you're going to have radial uh, scores across the tungsten and the arc is going to destabilize along those scores. So when you're grinding it, you want to grind it straight in line like this. Now, the reason being is that the lines will actually go down the length uh, and direction of the arc and your arc will be much more stable. When you're holding the tungsten against the stone in grinding, you need to be conscious that you need to be actively turning the tungsten. I actually turn it fairly rapidly so that it grinds it evenly all the way around. And I lock myself in so that I'm holding it at a steady angle. Now if you get a slight groove in the stone, stay with it. Don't try to jump out of it because you'll end up dancing all over the stone. Now if I want to uh, get a little truncation, all I need to do is fairly lightly take the tip like that and touch it against the stone as it's uh, winding down. The purpose of the truncation is to keep the point of the tungsten from flying off into the weld on a hard start or a high amperage. Now by grinding a sharp point, you will be able to control the arc at a very low amperage and have a very defined cone. Well, I hope that we've helped you understand TIG welding a little bit better by showing you how to properly grind a tungsten. Now keep in mind that having a properly ground tungsten is very key to keeping a very good, clean, stable arc. Now if you dip your tungsten into the puddle or you add the filler accidentally into the tungsten, you're going to need to regrind the tungsten every time you do this. Um, if you're practicing, sometimes you can get away with this, but if you're doing a serious weld, keep in mind that regrinding a tungsten is just part of uh, being a TIG welder. Now, if you have any more questions, please give us a call at the number listed at the end of the video. And as always, thanks for watching.